Hello, my name is Dr. Claire Martin and I'm the superintendent of the School District of Chilton and it is my pleasure to bring to you this information about the school district referendum question that will be placed on the April 5th general election ballot. In December, the school board of Chilton passed a resolution to put a question on the general election ballot regarding an operational referendum for the school district of Chilton. So to begin, as you can see on the PowerPoint that is behind me, the ballot question will state, shall the school district of Chilton, Calumet, and Manitowoc counties, Wisconsin, be authorized to exceed the revenue limits specified in section 12, 121.91 of Wisconsin statutes by $1 million for the 2016-17 school year, by $1.4 million for the 2017-18 school year, by $1 million by $1.4 million for the 2018-19 school year, and by $1.4 million for the 2019-2020 school year on a non-recurring basis for the purpose of maintaining and enhancing educational programming. Voters will be asked to respond to this ballot question with a yes or a no. The total amount requested in the referendum um, question is $5.2 million over a four-year period and it is on a non-recurring basis, meaning that once that four-year period is done, if the school district needs additional funds, they would need to go out to the taxpayers and ask again through a referendum and a resolution and a ballot question. So before we proceed with what we're talking about here in terms of educational programming, we want to give you a little bit of background. Referendums in general in Wisconsin since revenue limits were implemented and imposed on public school districts back in 1993, approximately 75% of Wisconsin school districts have gone to a referendum, either on a recurring or a non-recurring process. The, this trend of schools going to referendum to exceed the revenue limit has almost tripled since the 1990s. And most recently, in 2015, more than 78% of school referenda to exceed revenue limits successfully passed. Our purpose in bringing this information to you is to let you know that the School District of Chilton is not alone in going out to its taxpayers and asking for the ability to exceed the revenue limits in order to provide educational programming for its students. This is becoming more the trend, more the norm, um, in terms of school districts providing that additional funding that is necessary to continue with current programming. So now let's take a little bit of a look at our history. What have we done in the past to address our budgetary concerns? Over the past 12 years, the Chilton Public Schools have implemented $2.2 million in budget reductions. We have reduced staffing that have included administrators, teachers, clerical staff, and summer help. We have changed our health insurance structure for our employees and asking them to contribute more. We have increased employee contributions not only for health insurance but for retirement planning as well. An additional 2.6 million dollars in, in savings has occurred through debt retirement or debt refinancing for the school district. And over the past three years the Chilton Board has utilized its fund balance to balance the school budget. In 2012, the school board did pass a resolution to exceed the revenue limit in the amount of $1.5 million over three years. This was done in March, and then that same August rescinded the motion. So this ballot question never came in front of the Chilton taxpayers. That is because at that time, we re recognized and realized that taxes were going to be going up in the community, and we did not want to add to the tax burden. Also, the board decided that they would use their fund balance, which is money collected from the taxpayers that we use to pay for expenditures throughout the school year. Um, they decided to use those monies rather than go to referenda. We also, back in 2011, sent out a rather extensive community survey, and you may recall receiving that survey in your mailbox. The highlights of that survey indicated that we have high community satisfaction with the school district. 
Since the survey was administered, the administration and the school board have reviewed the information that has been brought to our attention on item importance and their importance in our programming from the community. Budget planning items have been reviewed and addressed by the board and the administration based on the input we've received from the survey. And comment themes that were provided in the survey have also been reviewed and addressed by the board and the administration. So even though that survey was put out in 2011, the board and the administration has, has systematically used that information as we have gone forward in looking at our programming, in adjusting potential budget reductions, um, and providing a balanced budget for our school district. To give you some indication of what I'm, I'm specifically talking about, on the slide, you will see the rank order of importance that community members were asked to respond to. Four was to increase, three was, a score of three was to keep, score of two to reduce, and one to eliminate. And you can see in the highlighted boxes in red where we have addressed many of the items that have been brought to our attention. And we have two pages of that to show you um, as evidence. So now going forward, why the need for this referendum? <clears throat> it's time that we take a look at our budget. We have reduced, we have utilized available funds through fund balance. We are now at a point where we need to ask the community, what would you like us to do next? We are proposing an operational referendum by asking for your authority to exceed the revenue limits for our students to be prepared and competitive as they leave Chilton High School. We want to be able to maintain the quality programming with the additional funds that may come to us through this referendum. We want to maintain the quality programming that we currently have, but we also want to provide enhancements to our programming so that our students can continue to be competitive, not only in our community, but in our state, across our country, and quite frankly, worldwide as students today need to be. You can see on the slide what those enhancements are, and I'd like to go to the next slide with you to discuss them more specifically. We want to add a K-12 from kindergarten through grade 12 social worker to our school district. We have guidance counselors at each of our buildings, but we see the need clearly. All staff members have prioritized this as a very high need for a K-12 social worker who can help us work with the social and emotional needs, not only of students, but how they interact with their families and how we can connect those students and their families to the local agencies in our community, in our county, that can help support them and help them achieve greater success. We have a number of students that have mental health issues. We have students that are dealing with grief, with suicide issues, with alcoholism, with drug abuse, not only of themselves, but perhaps of family members. Um, any number of these issues that are causing trauma in the lives of students and inhibiting them from achieving their success in school. Additionally, we want to add four additional staff members in the core areas of instruction in our curriculum. That is in reading and in math. We want to add a specialist in reading at the high school and a specialist in math at the high school. We also want to add a specialist in reading at the middle school and a specialist in math at the middle school. These, these trained professionals will work with our learners that are struggling to maintain grade level in these core areas of our curriculum. We have these specialists currently at our elementary school who've been working very successfully for a long period of time in helping students achieve grade level status. And the thinking for a long time has been, if we put our eggs in that basket and helped our youngest learners, that we could correct those problems early on and that those problems would not continue in the middle school and the high school. And for many children, that is the case. But for many children, it also is not the case because we have a lot more students coming in and out of our educational system that we may have never had in our elementary school, or students that have moved away, been here, moved away, and come back, and have gaps in their learning. By being able to address the needs of these students at these particular levels, reading and math, high school and middle school, 
the remaining remaining members of our staff members that are language teachers or math teachers will have more time to address the needs of our middle to high learners as well. So we see the addition of these staff members as, as critical in not only helping the needs of our neediest learners, but thereby helping the needs of all of our students across our curriculum. We also want to add an additional vocational arts teacher. We currently have two vocational art teachers working in the area of woods and metals and electricity, but this is an expanding area for us and a need for skilled workers in our community and in our state. We want to be able to offer more at our high school in terms of these kinds of courses, pre-engineering courses as well, but we also want to start offering opportunities for our middle school students to have some experience in vocational arts, which currently is not available to them. Their interest cannot just start at the high school door. We need to start capturing some of that interest at the middle school so that we can bring these students through and into programs into our high school programming and hopefully into technical college um, courses and, and occupations that will provide them good paying jobs. We also have a number of students in our school district that do not have English as their first language. And we need an additional aid, a bilingual aid, to help support them in their learning. We also have quite a bit of outdated vocational arts equipment in our vocational arts department. And we need to update that equipment so that students are learning on the basic equipment that they will see when they graduate from here and go to the technical colleges and go to those workplace environments. Mr. Brightlow, our high school principal and our vocational arts teachers have been working with a number of leaders in our local business and industry who have come in and observed what we have on hand and support our request for the need to update our current equipment. And last but not least, we have on our list of district needs and quite frankly wishes a One to World Technology Initiative. We want to put in the hands of every student, middle school through high school, grades 5 through 12, an electronic device that will connect them to the internet that will expand their access to technology and expand, quite frankly, their access to learning and the ways in which they learn and the ways in which they create um, documents, um, create new learning, create new um, pathways to learning beyond the walls of our school district. Many school districts have implemented initiatives like this. We have tried in an effort to have students bring their own device into our high school and have found that only about a third of our students are financially able to do that. This is the tool of the 21st century. This is the tool that every student will use whether they go to a four-year college, a technical college, or into the world of work. They need to have facility in the use of technology and we see this initiative as being extremely critical and important to our student success. So all this is well and good, and you say, Dr. Martin, how much is this going to cost? There is a tax impact, of course, and we have provided that information for you in this slide. The projected annual tax impact compared to the 2015 taxes. We show the amount that this will have an impact on the four years of the referendum, and also per the 100,000, 150,000, and 200,000 valuation of your home. We know that we are asking for our local communities to support us in this effort. We don't take this um, asking with our hand out lightly. We know that education is costly. It is an expense. But we also know that education is an investment. And we are hoping that our local taxpayers see this as a wise investment, not only for our current students, but for the students that are yet to come through our school system. And last but not least, I want to really highlight the, the information that is bolded at the bottom of this slide. If the tax money is not needed, we will only tax for the amount that we are requesting through these initiatives. We make that promise to you very solemnly and very sincerely. Um, clearly the information that we have put forth in this proposal is based on projections that we are very confident of. but. Things can change, and no one has a crystal ball that can see the exact amounts needed for the four years into the future. 
additional funding resources could become available to the district. And if that was the case, we would use those judiciously and work to keep the, the tax impact to the, to the smallest amount possible. So please know that there is a sincere promise on behalf of the administration, those that are remaining here um, past my eventual departure from the school district, but also the school board members who are on the board and those members who are up for re-election who have put their names in to be re-elected so that the taxpayers know that people are very firm in this commitment and will stand behind this promise that if the money is not needed, it will not be collected and only in the amount that is needed will be collected to fund these initiatives going forward. So what happens if the referendum doesn't pass? We need to have a balanced budget each and every year. If this referendum does not pass, clearly the enhancements are not going to be something that we'll be able to address immediately. And we'll have to look at the main maintenance of our current programming. We'll have to step back likely have administrative um, staff and board discussions seeking community input as well in terms of what direction do you want us to go in is it that we need to continue to cut our programming do we need to have additional layoffs and through those additional layoffs then do we reduce class sizes do we impact programming for students do we take a look at our building and grounds and our maintenance efforts and do we pull back funding in those areas do we pull back our current technology um, initiatives that we have and not fund that to the extent that we have? Do we look at the social, emotional, and remedial needs of our students and pull back on some of the programming there? And what about the safety and security? We have invested in those initiatives as well. Do we pull back on some of the costs there? All of these areas will be reviewed with, impact from the, with input from the board and the community Decisions will need to be made. Hard decisions will need to be made. But I assure you, we will continue to go forward with a balanced budget, um, but perhaps not at the same level of quality of programming. Um, the board may need to use more of their fund balance and thereby may need to go to short-term borrowing in order to um, um, fund the school district throughout the school year. Any number of decisions will need to be made. But that those kinds of discussions will happen um, if the referendum doesn't pass. I don't have a list for you to say, if this doesn't pass, this will exactly happen. Because there's not scare tactics intended here. We, we come to you with an honest request for your consideration of this referendum. If it doesn't pass, we will go back and reassess and be transparent to the community based on what we've received through a yes or a no vote from the referendum to say, okay, you have told us, so this is our next plan going forward to achieve a balanced budget. I thank you for your attention to this video. Also want you to know that if you have questions regarding our referendum, we have a website, um, www.chilton.k12.wi.us. That is our district website. And on the very front page of our district website, we have the ballot question, this video, other related documents um, pertaining to the referendum. There's also a question box where individuals can submit a question and we hope to start a Q&A section on that website so that people can go there looking for information. I'm also making presentations of this uh, PowerPoint to special organizations, um, service organizations throughout our local community. We also have two dates set up in March where the general public can come in and have this presentation and a question and answer session as well. So please avail yourself of the information that's going to be available. We'll be mailing out a flyer with information as well. We want you to feel informed when you go to the ballot box on April 5th and we encourage you to vote on that day. Thank you so much.